So everybody, this is just kind of a last meeting other than, put this on your calendar, Rafe, 10 a.m. tomorrow morning, right here, group photo. Because a little bit after 10 a.m., one member of the group will disappear. 11.30, Wednesday, group photo. 10 a.m. <laughs> <laughs> so, if any of you have figured this out, we voted Moses off the island. So, so he'll be leaving us tomorrow, so everybody can say their goodbyes to Moses. So, uh, this is kind of the last time we meet. No real agenda, but I did just want to kind of get us together one time. Uh, just my own observations are that you guys have done a great job of jumping in. I've seen people in each group really concentrating. I've seen some people you know, asking lots of questions and, and um, I think really making some headway with learning some stuff. Um, obviously it hasn't been the best of conditions, which is to say it's real world which is to say it's life in the tropics, and we don't complain, but it is hot and steamy, and it's about to start raining, and we've had these wild storms, um, and so you've probably had all your clothes wet. <laughs> and that's why everybody's running out to the clothesline. So anybody who's tuning in from outside, this is called, it's about... 5 p.m. and the rains are coming in and it's going to rain like cats and dogs What's for about name? the next two hours. Mm -hmm. Okay. Look at me. Moving. Uh, so, what we did in the week in Buea was to go through a lot of theory and ideas and experiences about inventories and sampling and trying to make very, very clear the difference between the two. Um, and then we came out here, and I think we've done a combination of the two. For example, the herpers have been running pitfall traps, and those pitfall traps are just these detectors that sit out there and pull in some herps, sometimes herps that you haven't otherwise gotten. Yes, no? Yes and yes. One species, yes. one species of herb caught, and one species that we didn't catch any else. Interesting. Interesting. So, then the question is, was it worth it? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, and the bird people use mist nets, and we know that those mist nets are not doing a complete job of anything, but what they are doing is bringing in documentary specimens from which we've learned some really interesting lessons. So those are kind of sampling sorts of things. But then some of you have seen, for example, Mark and Jacob out um, each morning. And they come back and they have these debates about, did you hear this song? It's, you know, or whatever. Where did you hear it? It was in the canopy. Oh, I saw that. It's this. Boom. Done. And they've been working through how many species total now? Easily over 120. Okay. Hundred some species. But very interestingly, for the last two days, they've only added one species to the list. And so that doesn't mean they're done, but it probably does mean that, that species accumulation curve is starting to level up. That's inventory thinking. Okay? So again, I don't I don't have much more on the agenda, but maybe let's go around the classroom such as it is and just get observations from different people. You guys want to start? Herpers, but trainees, instructors, everybody, just observations relevant to what we talked about last week. Moses, anything to do? Want to go first? Or? Okay. You want me to go first? Yeah, um, I, will, I will start by welcoming all of you to our research camp. And uh, I... I also wish to acknowledge that this camp is, is under the control of the, the Center for Tropical Forest Science uh, of the Smithsonian Institute. 
and I am happy they gave us the permission to, to host this training. And um, as you all have realized, after the film, after the classwork in Boya, uh, the field work was actually actually reflected to me. For concerning the plan, we actually sampled one transect of um, two plots which runs 20 by 500 meters and uh, within the two plots we we had 119 species of, of, of trees uh, the first plot we recorded 96 uh, plant species and <clears throat> and in the second plot and the second plot we we added about 20 more 23 species that makes it up to 119 species. <clears throat> then for our for our observational data we 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 had 79 species in the data which actually brings the species list for this area uh close to 200 um, a little bit um, less than 200 species so but i i think it's an exciting exercise for me and, and the plant team, they, they will actually testify that they learn a lot. They actually learn a lot. It may be more of repetition to me because I've worked in this area for over 18 years and I know the flora of this area well. It might not be so exciting for me, but the, 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 the participants, they were very, very, very excited about it and I, I think is the training was good. So what can you comment about the contrast between sampling and inventory? Because you kind of did both things. Which is to say you did the plots which are sampling. Yes. And then you accumulated these other records. Yeah the original records. Yeah. So what do you get from each from each task? Well, well, um, <clears throat> I, 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 at this point, I, I, I will really not, not conclude that, that it was really a complete inventory. Yeah, because if we, if we want to make it a complete inventory, then we need more days to like move out of the plot and get, get, get um, more species into the sample and also set up more, more transects to actually conclude, um, 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 to give a complete um, um, inventory for the area. So this was just a practical exercise. Mm -hmm. And if you want to make it complete, then more plus have to be added and you need more time to take more of it to But if your task was just to complete inventory, would you use plots? Uh, just plots will not be enough. Okay. Yes, you have to use plot plus the observational data. And for the observational data, you need more days. You need more days to go in into sites that are out of your sampling plot <coughs> before you can actually conclude, give an inventory of okay. Great. Thoughts? To a naive, a naive observer, um, you know, this is my first time, so it's all it's all new to me. So it's all really exciting. Um, but I, I continue to have this uh, sort of profound experience that it's all about the habitats, and the microhabitat variation and, and diversity. And so we spend one night right here in the river in these low flat areas, and we get one group of frogs, and we spend the next night walking around in steeper, high, higher gradient streams with lots of rocks and we get a whole different suite of species there and spend the night paging, uh, combing through uh, understory trees that hang over rivers and we get another group of frogs and last night we spent a lot of time walking back along a, along a trail away from the stream and got two new species of gecko. So um, for me, it's always... Um, my uh, experience in a situation like this is wondering whether we've sampled all the different habitat types. And I'm, I'm sure my gut feeling is no, and that what I wish I had was about a month to keep doing this and live here and, uh, and get the same crew of people to go back and find new places and look during the day to find 
different habitat areas where we could find different groups of species. And so anyway, um, I think that that's that's pretty cool. It's a pretty cool experience for me. Um, but that's you know I don't I don't have any experience with this fauna before, so I'm going to defer to these guys down there. Um, so I think right now we're up to about 35, 36 species of amphibians and reptiles. Probably about one third of that is reptile. And from what we know of the fauna, I mean that's you know a pretty large underestimate, especially for the reptiles. Um, so that just speaks not only to the microhabitat variation that there is, but also just the seasonality uh, and the time of day. So we're spending a lot of our time going out to do work at night rather than during the day. Um, so we're missing some, you know, diurnal lizards potentially that are out. Uh, so, you know, we can try and remedy some of that with pitfall traps and, you know, someone bringing in a snake that they found on the trail somewhere during the day. Um, but, you know, to really have a thorough inventory here, not only would we need more sampling across microhabitats, but also across, you know, just times of year, really, to get activity patterns. From. But we've done pretty well in a few days. Walter or other trainees, any reflections on what you have been surprised at or what's been interesting? And uh, I wish I had this training like when I was just studying herpetology because we don't have herpetology studies or courses in Malawi, so this is like the real course for me. So I'm so grateful to God and the whole VA to see here. Thank you. Yeah, for me, I will start thanking Tony for giving me the opportunity to come all the way from Kenya to Cameroon. I'm very happy for that. I learned a lot of skills. I will not say that I'm 100% qualified, but I gain a lot of skills on taxidermy, especially on the removing the body from the bar and skinning, putting the body back again. It's very difficult. So I really say thank you a lot, Son. Gain a lot of experience. I really appreciate it. Okay, thank you very much for uh, this opportunity and um, to me to be among the participants of this uh, course. Uh, first of all, what I will say is that out of uh, my experience in um, forest inventory and even university inventory, I've come to a new, quite a new ecosystem. Because out of the 119 species, I've come across 30 of them. So all the other species was quite new to me. So I'm really so impressed on uh, the new discovery that I happened to have during this course. So I, it's really amazing to me. And I really like to come again to stay maybe for more time to come. I'm sure that if I had to stay here for more than a week, I will discover more and more new species that I want to meet. Thank you very much. Back down <coughs> this way. Comments from any of the trainees, the things that you learn, things that you. Yeah, I'm very grateful, most especially to Moses, who gave me the opportunity to be part of this crew, the town, and everybody. I've been able to learn so many things. I'm very, very happy and excited. And it has given me so much interest to move forward. Things I used to see in t in the, uh, on TV, like fixing, fixing animals, doing all the stuff, preserving them, wow. These, few, these past days I've been able to do all of those things. Fixing animals, as, um, being able to, to preserve them, 
knowing all the chemicals that are being used and all that, I was able to learn so many things. Going out at night was very exciting. Yeah, at times we rush, we rush around the streets, fall into the water just to catch all those and it was very exciting, <laughs> very exciting. Yeah, I'm very happy that I was able to be part of this course and I'm very grateful. And I hope in the future we're going to have another opportunity like this to be able to study. Most especially for me who just graduated, I need courses like this to be able to give me the zeal to be able to continue in the field. Thanks very much. Yeah. Thank you very much. Uh, I would say first of all, I want to appreciate the fact that Cameroon was chosen for this course. Uh, all along, we have been trying for something like this to, to be part of our society because uh, it's very rare to see in Cameroon blending academy, uh, um, classroom work and, and field work. Mm -hmm. So this is like an eye-opener for us because we have seen that it is real, it's possible to do this in Cameroon. Mm -hmm. And for some of us Cameroonians that were selected, I appreciate the fact that the number that are involved in this course, they get across different taxa, and this is like going to set a platform for us to continue this legacy that we are going to set today. I appreciate the fact that you came here, town, and your crew. I mean, what, just like what we said, we have been observing this thing in National Geographic and other channels, especially the issue of handling snakes and reptiles. Some of us are not really um, very comfortable with that, but we see that we can do that in our own society. We can get along with all these things. Um, thank you very much. Okay. I want to start by thanking the, the organizers of this training. Actually, we have gained a lot. Uh, most of the birds I came across are birds that were found on Mount Cameroon, but there were some that were on Mount Cameroon and I have not seen them yet, such as the African torch. And there are others here that have seen them like uh, new birds, which, uh, new birds to ship. And going and uh, creating more nets, and uh, with uh, the help of uh, Mr. Joseph here, I've learned some sounds of new birds, the calls of birds. Mm -hmm. I've actually, actually added about 11 to the ones I knew. Okay, I start by, uh, as I said, thanking uh, town and other members of the ITC. Of course, uh, I really thank uh, uh, our member, our plant member, and our plant uh, one of the uh, knowledge for person, uh, Moses. Mm -hmm. uh, I really loved all those times I spent uh, in Buya uh, and uh, this chimpanzee camp as well. I really loved the food, I really loved the way we have been interacting. Mm -hmm. And above all, uh, I could easily compare the forest species we have in Ethiopia and uh, the, those forest species uh, uh, we, have, we have in here in this Kuru uh, National Park during the inventory. And I can uh, I can I can really say that I can easily uh, teach those guys in Ethiopia. I can easily pass the knowledge again uh, uh, through this meeting to other guys working for me mm -hmm. in Ethiopia. And I, I I'm, I'm really thankful to the organizers. To thank you. Mm -hmm. I'd like to thank Moses for bringing us to one of the most special places on the planet. Mm -hmm. As the planet continues to erode. This is an unbelievable place to be in such a wild area where even though we haven't seen some of the <coughs> megafauna elephants and chimpanzees, the fact that they're here makes us special. So thank you, Moses, for bringing us here. I think Mark hit the nail on the head there. I'm really thankful we're back here again with you, Moses. It was nice that it was drier this time. <laughs> but uh, no, it's just been fantastic going out, and it's been really great seeing how our inventory methods, especially for birds, are complemented really well by our, our observational data and our sort of sampling of the area. And it sounds like the herpetologists have been doing really well too. And it's great having all of these different people here at the same time, especially because we're getting data from like uh, food items from the birds that we would never be able to have identified without the plant people here. And at the same time, we're getting all these different associations sorted out that having this multidisciplinary multi group is just fantastic for working on this. So I'm really glad to be here with everyone. It's been a really good learning experience and a, just a great field experience in general. 
Kate, any observations? No. <laughs> Kate's very happy behind the camera. Mm. So I will kind of wrap up with a bunch of thank yous, and I'm certain to forget something, but a big thank you to the instructor team. So Moses, our plant expert, um, Rafe and Dave and Herx, Mark, Jacob, and Birds, Kate, co-director of the BITC project. But uh, basically, thanks to all of you, because I know this is way more than a couple weeks of your time. It's all the preparation for the talks, and it's all of the time spent drying out your clothes after chimpanzee camp. Um, I'm very, very conscious of how much this essentially costs you. So big thank you to all of you. Um, a big thank you again to the Smithsonian and to Corp National Park for hosting us here in this amazing facility where there is primary rainforest 10 meters away from you at any point in time. Um, it might drop on you at any point. And might fall on you at any <laughs> point in time. Um, which would be a good way to go. Uh, a big thank you to Tropeg for hosting us as uh, an institution interested in uh, biodiversity and tropical ecology. And they've just been the most um, helpful and supportive hosts that we could have imagined. Um, perhaps most of all, thank you to Moses, because um, Kate and I met Moses just a little bit more than two years ago. And Moses, of course, invited us to Cameroon about an hour after we met him. <laughs> and it sounded like a good idea. And Moses has been at all of our courses except one. And it's been great working with him in each course, but also now working with him um, in a variety of, of situations. Um, I have the privilege of being his co-advisor co for his PhD but also now in, in organizing these research efforts and this training effort. So Moses, a big, big thank you. How about a round of applause for Moses? And a round, a round of applause for Cameroon. And also a round of applause for all of the, the guys who've been essentially here as part of a, the, the team, Joseph, Innocent, uh, if everybody Hans. has Hans. Hans. Uh, Dixon, Mambo, Peter. Big thank you to the whole local team. Because this has been a success thanks to you guys. So, so big thank you. And I think with that, we basically call the course closed. And I thank all of you for working so hard, especially the trainees. <laughs>